the whole one. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask way back when to put some programs together, and I thought of Tommy Drury and Greg Foley, who are two local horse trainers uh, with different connections to Oldham County, and I'll have to explain that. Greg Foley on the far right began training in 1981 and has only 1,500 acres. <laughs> <laughs> Superstar, a horse named Mango, a good enough. Hope he just to see about Mango. He mm -hmm. 14 in his life. And 11 of them are at CD at Churchill Down. And Gray, and he won more races than any horse at Churchill or not yet. He has, uh, he's tied with one other horse right, as a, right this moment uh, with the horse. Uh, I can't remember his name right, right now. Breakers. Hopefully, he breaks the record. Uh, November 4th, Breeders' Cup Day at Churchill. He's going to run the church in the, in the uh, Aristides uh, $300,000 race. The yeah, uh, important thing about Mango, I don't like to say this about our competition on high level forward, is that he's forward, he's forward and raised with ups and downs on, 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 in Oldham County. That's what's important about Mango. Greg also shared he's going to be a grandfather for. Thank you. In the middle, Tom Curry. Tom Curry began training in 1991. 584 wins. You only got a thousand in the next, you know, catch up. Next year. You're just a little short. I'm not quitting yet either. <laughs> but uh, the most important thing. From there, but grew up my whole life in Oldham County. Uh, um, my dad was a trained horses and uh, grew up in River Bluff subdivision, the first house up the hill on the right. Lived there for a lot of years. I uh, went to school right here at Oldham County, all through, uh, went to the elementary school, Liberty School, then over here to uh, uh, went to junior high and, and then the high school now, uh, then went over to high school, the old, I called it the, the old high school right here. Uh, to finish up and actually went my last year we we were the first year to move back over to the junior high I always called it that's where I'm, I went to junior high but uh, uh, grew up in Oldham County great place to grow up and uh, uh, grew up um, working with the horses from the get-go with my dad trained and uh, raced um, River Downs in Ohio and that and just I was around him my whole life he had Several farms here in Oldham County, back Liberty Lane, had a beautiful training center right across the paddock from Bill's place, a uh, gorgeous place. That, uh, that's where I learned a lot of my trade right there, young and growing up, and, and uh, it's pretty much where it started. I do have an important question. Be careful how you answer this. What instructor at Oldham County High School might have had more influence on you than any other? Who is the best teacher you had at Oldham County High School? Oh, it had, had to be Blake Hazelton. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's the only one present here, but <laughs> he, was, he was a good one. Yeah. Uh, um, Tommy Drury, Oldham County Connection. Uh, my um, third generation uh, horseman. Uh, I've, my family's actually got a lot of ties to the Foley family. My grandfather worked for 
Greg's dad, um, when I was 15 years old, one of the first actual paying jobs I had was working for Greg's sister, Vicki, who's also a trainer. And um, I, um, when, when, when I was, when I was a baby, my father worked at uh, Van Wert Training Center, which you guys probably know as Paramount Estates on Highway 42. That's back when it was a racehorse training facility. So when I came home from the hospital, that's where I spent my earliest days. And uh, he then went on to work at Skylight Training Center, which is, again, just down the road from, from where Bill's at. And I think that's probably where I learned most of my early lessons was at Skylight. And, and uh, you know, I always wanted to train, always wanted to be involved with the horses. I got my license when I was 18 years old. And at the time, I was the youngest active trainer in the state of Kentucky and just been working hard every day ever since trying to trying to keep it moving forward so here's an open-ended question what does a horse trainer do a lot of people don't know what do you do well we start <laughs> early every day um uh, track the racetrack opens at church at 5 30 in the morning i get there usually 4 34 45 uh, your whole crew a lot of them guys I, it's like they don't go to sleep got a, we have a lot of spanish help as you would guess, ninety uh, percent of mine, I'm sure Tommy's, uh, is the workforce for us over there, and don't know what we'd do without them. But anyway, we get started, and uh, the guys come in, and first thing they do, uh, before, probably an hour before the track opens, they clean the stall. Each groom, a groom has four horses. That's those are their horses. They do everything for that horse. They clean their stalls, give them baths, groom them. Uh, but anyway, we come in, and that's. Everybody cleans their stalls and get your horses cleaned off a little bit. And uh, I'll have the tack, the set list marked for the horses going to the track. Uh, we currently have 44 over at Churchill Downs. We've got from 5.30 till 10 o'clock to get those horses out with two breaks, 30-minute breaks. They go out and pair the tracks at 7.30 and then again at 8.30. So you got to keep, as you would imagine, you got to keep rolling right along to get those horses out. I have four riders myself that go out in sets of four. Um, again, that's uh, that keeps you moving, rolling right along all morning. Um, horse goes out to the track. They do different things, gallop, jog, depending on how hard you want the horse to train that day. Uh, they're all different. Uh, but anyway, they go to the track, come back, and they'll get it. That groom will give them a good bath. And we have what you call hot walkers. They're, they're, uh, Literally, that's what it is. They they hold the horse for the, the groom while they're getting a bath, and they'll walk and give them water, um, hence the name Hot Walkers. They'll walk about 30 minutes and, and go on to the next one. We have quite a few of those. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a tough grind. You got you to gotta love it and be about half crazy to do it. Um, I think you do, but uh, it is. It's every day seven days a week and uh on us i mean it's tough but uh and then the the help and that uh you know you got to give them a lot of credit for for doing it too and it's uh they come they're very important for those horses uh, um taking the great care of them um uh, uh which they they all get thank you Greg. tommy <clears throat> give us a typical day for you tommy's a little different than greg because he's Got a spot out in Skylight Training Center and also down at Churchill. Give, give us your day, including including one and one in the afternoon someplace. Okay. Uh, the most important thing I do every day is answer the phone when Bill Landis calls me. Uh, that's 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 where it usually begins. Uh, I, uh, I I like Greg. I usually get to the barn. Uh, you know, you try to be in the barn by quarter to five. Um, our first set goes out at five twenty, and we try to be right on the racetrack as soon as it opens. Again, you uh, you know, it, it, it's a it's controlled chaos, if you will. You're you're trying to get these horses out and back in their stall, and you're trying to look over everything, and you only have a, a minimal amount of time to do it. Uh, what makes my day a little tricky, as Greg mentioned, they, they have what's called a, a renovation break every morning from 7 to 7.30. Uh, it's workers only uh, right after that break, meaning 
uh, that's when the horses will get their timed workouts. Uh, they, they don't allow anything on the racetrack for the first 15 minutes, but the horses that are breezing. Workout meaning race, race speed. Workout meaning a controlled run, if you will. Um, so uh, for me, a lot of days, uh, that's that's all the time that I have at Churchill because I have to get the skylight. I have to get out the, out here to, to check on the skylight horses as well. So um, what I'll do is I'll try to kind of organize my set list around the horses that I feel like I really need to for sure lay eyes on on, on that particular day. Uh, head to skylight and by that by the time I get there, my assistant usually got things starting to kind of move along and you know, you train there as long as you, as long as you have to, but a, a lot of times, you know, if you've got a horse in the, the second race, we've got several racetracks that are within two hours of, of where we're at. That's the, that's the good thing about Odom County is you're centrally located to all these racetracks. We've got uh, Belterra Park in Cincinnati. Uh, we've got Indiana, Horseshoe, Indiana, which is uh, just outside of Indianapolis. Uh, Ellis Park, which is in Henderson, Kentucky. All of these racetracks are about an hour and a half to two hours away. So, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of mornings where not only are you trying to train horses and, and oversee the staff and make sure everything's getting handled, but you also have to run home, grab a shower. And hopefully you'll have time to grab something to eat and in the car and off to the races. And, um, uh, that, you know, that morning might start at a quarter to five and you might walk back in the door at six, seven o'clock that night after you've finished running and getting the horse taken care of. And we really are nuts. <laughs> we really are. I, I, I told you that a long time ago. So, so let's talk about running one in the last at Turfway, which is night racing, by the way. Yeah. How's that go? Well, I haven't done that in a while. I did a little last year. I've been going to New Orleans at the fairgrounds in the winter time. But um, I don't know if all you know, we got the gaming in Kentucky now, which has made the purses in Kentucky skyrocket. They're this the best money and for that horses are racing for in the in the country and um, all the tracks have followed suit turfway being one of them um, i raced there for a lot of a lot of years and stayed here and won a lot of races there the, the money kind of went away and wilted and it just got that's when i started going to new orleans and the, the fairgrounds about 12 years ago but the money get, getting pumped back up with the gambling the last couple of years uh I left a few horses here last winter over at the Churchill Downs Training Center with, at the Spectrum, which you move over there January 1st. Churchill Downs shuts down. You have to get out of there. So I I, I like to stay close to home with mine. And uh, anyway, this year we're going to have quite a few more stay over at the Spectrum. And I'm still going to send another string uh, to the New Orleans also. So we'll have two spots that I think will work out great. You got to have races there. And, uh, a lot of your better horses, I like to take them south um, just to get out of the weather. Uh, if you got lucky enough to have some good two-year-olds now turning three, um, I think I do have some pretty nice young two-year-olds that haven't run yet, uh, uh, along with uh, some older horses just to get them out of the weather. They'll probably go south to the fairgrounds. But the money being so good here in, in Kentucky and Turfway, it's just it, it makes no sense not to stay in and running them and, and the bad thing about it everybody else is too with the money so it's a it's a lot tougher than it used to be it's like it's it's really churchill downs meet you're running at it turfway it's uh you got to go up there you got to run thanks Greg. now <clears throat> something that i guarantee you most people don't know about how do you get paid how do you get paid and what do you bill for and how do you bill it you talk real nice to them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, Greg was just saying earlier, this, uh, this is probably the only job that I know of that um, uh, like if a horse comes into us uh, the, the first week of the month, then we actually don't send an invoice to that owner until the end of that month. So we're already almost 30 days into training the horse and taking care of it, all of its needs before uh, we even send our first invoice out. So, um, I've got a bookkeeper. I used to do it myself and it just got to be too much. Uh, I've got a bookkeeper that helps me. We go through the invoices at the end of every month. She types them out. She sends them out. And, uh, she's kind of my collection agent, if you will. If someone gets behind, she'll reach out and 
she's usually polite the first couple times and 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 then that other side of her comes out but for you know for, it, it's uh for the most part people um uh, you know they they honor their expenses um there's not really a, a a set rule different trainers charge different prices i would guess right now to to have a horse in training at like churchill downs for instance uh you could find a trainer to do that anywhere from $85, $90 a day to up, up to $125, $130 a day, depending on uh, who, you, who you go to. So it's not cheap to have these things in training. It's a, it's a major expense for someone. And again, that's, that's where our job comes into play of focusing on every detail and making sure that we can make the sources as good as we possibly can. There's a considerable, there's a considerable investment that we're responsible for. Um, but, but for the most part, uh, it, it's, it's more of a handshake agreement. We don't have contracts or things of that nature. It's more of a, more of a handshake agreement with the client. And, you know, we've been, I, at least for myself, I've been pretty lucky with the people that I've done business with. Well, now you, you, you danced around the issue. So what happens when you win a $100,000 race at Churchill Downs or even run second in a $100,000 race? You get any part of that, or you just give them best wishes? I, I again, everybody's different. I charge twelve percent for the first four places. Ten uh, percent goes to me. I split one percent between my assistants, and then one percent goes to the rest of the barn staff. So, uh, um, you, you know, these these guys are, as Greg mentioned, we couldn't do our job without these guys, and they need to, you know, they need to be rewarded when horses run well, and they need to know that they're appreciated and um, and and that's that's kind of our way. And and again, there's not a law that says we have to do that. That's just the way that I choose to do it. Uh, you know, we'll build that for the first four places, and and uh, after that, it's uh, um, you know we we just got to get back to the drawing board and figure out how to get that horse to the winner's circle. Because you know, if you finish fifth or sixth, it doesn't it doesn't pay at all. So uh, that's. That's where uh, our our whole livelihood kind of depends on winning races, without a doubt. Okay, now this is a tricky question. Now you're going to educate me. Both of these guys have been on the Triple Crown in the Derby. They've been, been there. They they lived it. They've done it. How do you identify those horses, and what do you do with your two year olds right now that you think you know might be a decent three year old or three year old cool horse? I don't know what Tommy would say, but uh, you identify them just like you do uh, watching one of these football games or uh, basketball games. The good ones separate themselves from the bad ones pretty quickly. And it's the same with the horses. Uh, some of them are, take a little long, longer than others to uh, kind of figure out what they're doing. But uh, the good ones usually show you some talent pretty quick, you know. And uh, as far as the two year olds, uh, a lot of guys do it differently. I've, I think I've ran four only four so far this year I, I probably take a little longer time than most guys i just uh uh like to have them uh not that anybody else doesn't but i don't run very many of them when they start running these two-year-olds you can run mckeenland in april and that's that's awful early i think but uh, a lot of a lot of people do that but um again i've, I've got a bunch of quite a few two i think i've got about 22 year olds right now and the biggest part of them are, are getting right, ready to run. I've ran, I think I said four, um, planning on running a bunch here at this Churchill November meet and, and uh, get a race in them before the year's out and set up hopefully for a big three-year-old year. That's, you, I want to turn these young two-year-olds into, hopefully some of them turn out to be really good three-year-olds. And hopefully there's a couple in there that could be on the Triple Crown, Triple Crown Trail. Well, I'm going to warn you, don't give out names. This crowd will, this crowd will, <laughs> and they will hold you accountable. Except Jason, 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 Jason uh, no. our picker. Now, Tommy, now you've got to do it. Now, again, how do you then, how do they separate themselves? It works or just the way of going or, or what, what's your thought on two-year-olds this time of year? I, I think it's like Greg said, the better, the better horses just do the, they just do things easier than the others. Uh, you know, we're, we're always paying close attention as trainers. Um, uh, you might have two, two year olds that, uh, in a workout, they may finish up absolutely together. 
Uh, but then, uh, you know, where Greg and I, the things that we're looking for is uh, how hard are these horses blowing afterwards? How much, how much did we take out of them? How much did they have left in the tank? You know, we're going to have a conversation with our riders. Did you have horse left or were you finished? Were you asking him for everything he had? Where were you? And, you know, uh, and again, that that's the kind of details that uh, that goes along with our job every day. And uh, I always kind of compare my job to I have 75 horses and training all together and it's like dealing with 75 teenage kids they've all got their own personality they you know they they get out of the stall they feel good they want to play they're not always as focused as you would like uh, you know some are going to be easier than others some are going to be you know better mannered than others but they all have their own personality. And, and I think that's one of the most important jobs that, that Greg and I has is, is we've got to figure those personalities out and, you know, or, or a school teacher, you know, you have to figure out how to teach the horse the lessons that they need to know. And, uh, and it's, it's certainly not cookie cutter. You're, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, they'll make you bang your head against the wall a little bit, but I, I do agree with Greg. I think the, the better horses, they, they really separate themselves out. If you, you know, anybody that's a sports fan kind of can kind of, kind of pick up on what we're saying. I mean, it just, uh, if you've got the, the varsity basketball team on the court, then, you know, anybody that halfway knows what they're looking at, they're going to be able to pick out the star player pretty quickly. And that's kind of how horses are. Well, um, uh... I didn't want to get to this, but we're going to get into it just briefly, and it's not it's not going to be bad. You know, Churchill Downs, it'll be as easy as, it'll be easy as I can make it. Churchill Downs had a hell of a spring. Oh man, injury wise, I knew that. Saratoga had an injury. Uh, very prominent races. Do you have? Would you would you have a problem? You're hearing more and more about it. Turfway is a synthetic track. Uh, Churchill Downs is a dirt track. Keeneland is a dirt track. Would you have a problem? And there is a movement afoot to convert all dirt tracks to synthetics. What's your thought there? I did Do not see that question on that list uh, that he showed us. Sure. That There's question was not on that list. <laughs> There's nobody from Churchill here. You've heard movement about this? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better. If Churchill Downs put synthetic uh in their on their racetrack i'll just fall over that'll uh, be the end of that it. ain't gonna happen they tried it at keeneland what happened with that well they tried it gone in california Kingland. they're gone they're good at turfway because it's winter time it gets to be 15 20 degrees and you can race because it doesn't freeze unless it gets 10 or below it's got to be. We have to have it there. Do you attribute any of the injuries that Churchill had this fall to the dirt? No. I think you pretty well answered that question. But Absolutely ahead. not. No. Um, I think Churchill's one of the safest tracks in the country, if not. Uh, it'll vary. Tommy will think will agree with me on that part. Uh, Churchill Downs racetrack loves water. In the summertime, it get deep and loose. It you know, if you don't get a lot of rain, we get a little aggravated sometimes with our track man if he doesn't keep enough water on it. That's my biggest complaint sometimes. As far as breaking horses down, what happened this spring, I know there was little, there was more than normal in that short period of time that everybody got alarmed at. The media got a hold of it like everything else and blew it out. Proportion, they didn't shut Churchill Downs down. We stayed there. We trained every day. Worked horses every day. We didn't race, but we trained and raced them and took them to Dallas Park. I mean, what was the diff I mean, what yeah. what was the difference? It, except it shut everybody up and quieted them down. You heard enough? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. That was the last question. Just for the record, Churchill had a uh, September meet and there were no fatalities. There were no breakdowns. Can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah, I am. But Can I he wants just, just one thing on the, uh, and, and this is something that I don't think everybody's aware of. Um, let's just say um, Greg and I are training, Bill's going to be our horse. So for, for Bill to do a published workout, meaning a controlled run or a breeze, uh, Greg and I have to have a veterinarian go over Bill and make sure that Bill is able 
that he feels like Bill has, has no physical problems. Basically, he'll just kind of do a health examination, if you will. And that has to be documented and that has to be on file just for us to do a morning workout. Uh, okay, Bill gets through his work workout and he's ready to be entered into a race. Before I can enter Bill into a race, I have to have a veterinarian come back and do another physical examination that says, yes, I've examined Bill. Bill seems to be in good health. Uh, I don't see any physical issues with Bill. Uh, therefore, it's okay that this horse be entered. So once this horse is entered, once this horse, once Bill is entered into a race, and, uh, and he's actually in the body of the race, the morning of the race, there's going to be a different veterinarian come around and he's going to do even state another, this, this one works for the state, uh, has no ties to, to any of us whatsoever. They're going to do yet another inspection on bill and they're going to make sure that, that they feel like everything's in good order, that bill is healthy, that bill doesn't have any physical problems, that everything's okay. Uh, now we've got past that. Now we hang the bridle on. We're going to the paddock to, to, to get the saddle on Bill and get him, get him ran. Uh, when we get in the paddock and while we're saddling, there'll be yet another veterinarian in the paddock that's watching what's going on in the paddock, that's making sure that a horse isn't getting overheated, making sure there's no accidents, making sure that, that everybody's safe and sound. You get past that, the jockey gets on Bill, he goes out on the track. And there's a vet on the racetrack that watches all the horses warm up to make sure that no one's taking a bad step. Uh, they'll have a conversation with the jockeys. Hey, is this horse feel okay to you? And, and they'll do yet another inspection before they get to the starting gates. So, uh, so I, I think a lot of times people read the stories in the newspapers and they think that, you know, we're just throwing these horses in these races and we don't care. And the fact of the matter is these horses are like our children and, and the responsibility that we feel for them is, is second to none. And uh, that's just an example, though, of, of some of the things that you might not read in the paper and, and, and just how, how many details are covered on these racehorses every day. And then after, after the race, they, they're examined also. Questions? Yeah, I got two for how do you find your horses? Like you said, you look like a college recruiter. Do you just watch video of different races, or do you take people who just, hey, I got a great horse here. You want to look at him and test him out? Or how do you pick your horses? And then, if you're recruiting one from a race that you watch, mm -hmm. how do you go about getting to that owner and say, hey, we want your horse? How, how does that work? Well, young horses, uh, no, you've heard of Keeneland, except they have yearling sales. That's where we find a lot of our young horses. Um, for our clients, we'll go with the sale. That's a, that's a, a what is that, 10-day sale on mm -hmm. Bill? Uh, starting out with book one through uh, six, book one being the premier horses, the two, three million dollar horses you see sell through there. But even book two, three, those high dollar horses, they're, you know, they're out of my league to buy. Um, but I usually get started. I'll start looking maybe book three, book four on uh, on down. But uh, whatever clients you have, whatever, uh, you know, you get get together with them, what money they have to spend, um, what horse you can afford to buy. And again, like the young recruits, that's what you're looking for. But these are young, they're year old. You know, you don't know how fast, you got no idea. You're going by pedigree and the looks. You're trying to find an athlete. More or less, by you looks and. Well, the horses I'm talking about are bought at the sale from clients that I have. They'll say, "I want you to go, team, let them buy me one, two, three, however many." Um, we do put groups together um, that we stay in for a leg, leg of a horse. I call it um, on on those in groups like that. We do that quite a bit. Uh, that's that's how you find those young horses like that. You're talking, and you asked about if a horse runs, and you got a client, uh, say a young horse runs a two-year-old, wins impressive. You might have a client call you, see if that horse was maybe maybe available for sale. Uh, you just you go and ask, you know. And uh, again, you're talking about these two-year-olds running and winning first time out. Nine times out of ten, they're gonna 
tell you they're not for sale or it's going to be astronomical numbers. They're going to ask for the horses. But Greg's best horses lately have been homebreds that owners have given him. Bango, Sconson, Obesos. Right. Long time owners of mine. I raced they just the horses them. he's talking about. I raced their mothers, you know, uh, and, and they kept them and bred them. And we've been lucky enough to raise these types of horses out of them. Some really nice young horses. Again, that's, how we come up with those. And just speaking for Tommy, his lifeline is Claiborne Farm, which might be the greatest thoroughbred mm -hmm. nursery in, in all right. of in you, Kentucky history. Again. I feel, don't feel sorry for Tommy. <laughs> One quickie. Yeah. Is there, uh, you all talk about the horses that stand out amongst the others and so forth. Is there a specific trait that you look for that you want in a horse and a trait that you look for that you don't want? Speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're looking for, fast. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, I, they can, again, They, as I was saying earlier, they all have their own personality. And, and I've had some horses that you couldn't hardly really go into a stall with, and they ran lights out. They were super nice horses. I've had others that you couldn't go in a stall with and, and they just didn't want to do it. They, they just did. They just chose not to do it. And that's, again, you know, we, we do and do and do for these horses, but you can't make them do it. It's uh, they, they have to want to win and they have to want to compete. And, you know, it's just like any other athlete, the, the effort and the try that's, that's really, to me, I guess that'd probably be the number one thing. Uh, just, just make the most of what you've got to work with. If they, if they're giving you the effort and the try and you do your job, then usually the combination is going to help you find the winner's circle at some level. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Thanks. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And we have some remember the coins here. It's got the rotary four-way test that we did today on the very back, and it's got the uh, rotary symbol on the front of it. All right. And this is to uh, <clears throat> no excuse me <clears throat> to help eradicate polio. And we thank you so very kindly, and we'll give a twenty-five dollar donation in your name for that cause as well. Thank you very so, much. Excuse me. I'm thanks so for sorry. having us. But thanks again. Thank you guys. Thanks. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. <laughs>